Hello and welcome back to the weird world of AI generated retro game titles. It's not the catchiest of names, I'll give you that. This is volume 2, if you've not watched volume 1 then I suggest you go and watch that first, but I'm not your mother, you do what you want. The premise of this series is thus, I have generated a load of retro game titles using artificial intelligence, feeding it a big list of games and asking it to suggest me some new ones. I have then gone out to a mixture of people, from Patreon to Twitter to YouTube, and I have asked people if they'd like to draw me a front cover for this imaginary game title. I then got friend of the channel Stu the Brummy on Discord and we discussed these entries, providing each of the games with a price sticker ranging from budget to half price to premium. These stickers aren't just given to those with beautiful artwork, however, the price of each game depends on the premise, the title, the concept, and whatever sort of mood Stu is in on any given day. Anyway, that's enough words, let's get on with it, shall we? The year is 2037, and following massive climate change, a desertification of the planet, and a general lack of food, the upper classes have eaten 99% of the humans on the planet. You can see Her Majesty sort of look at President Obama as if to say, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Those hunting and shooting rotters, the royal family, currently at the top of the food chain, have now set their hearts and shotguns on a nice plate of egg and bacon. Consequently, they are chasing poor someone through an apocalyptic landscape so they can crack it into some soft-boiled egg. Steer someone against all odds, avoiding bullets, bearskin-hatted troops, and the royals themselves as you plod your way to the sanctuary of Barter Town, the last democratic outpost, while keeping your shell intact. Uh, what, what game franchise do you reckon it's part of? Is it Seymour Goes Hunting? Seymour, the, the, the formed Dizzy, yeah. basically. Shooting land Dizzy. <gasps> Shooting world oh, Dizzy! Oh, close. <laughs> I enjoyed the, the, the little Phil Mitchell as well. That's, that, mm. that goes there very nicely. Those... Well, it's a good reference to the original, which uh, did have the Mitchell brothers on the front cover. Ah, oh, very, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> what price range are you sticking on that one, Stu? Uh... Well, if it's a later Dizzy game, it probably would have been in the higher price category. But, mm -hmm. I mean, if I saw that cover, I I would probably wait for it to uh, go into the sale. Remember how I said the algorithm loves giving games with ridiculous titles to people who admit they have no artistic talent? <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it horse related as well? <laughs> it's not actually. This one could be the worst offender though for, for, for this particular issue. Uh, this is an absolutely insane title. It is 19 words long. Oh, Jesus. The title is... A man walks away from a fight while he watches an ice cube ball roll up the ocean floor. <laughs> a man walks away from a fight while he watches an ice cube ball roll up the ocean floor. Luckily, it's quite a, a big descriptive title. Uh, so I'm guessing the cover is literally what the title is. Uh, the image itself is minimalist. Right, okay. <laughs> I'll say. Uh, I, I dare say he's used a lot of emojis. I think so. <laughs> if this was released in the 80s, it'd be very forward thinking. Yeah. Which he, uh, he, he actually does bring that up in the description, actually. Um, Thomas has been sent a rather amazing video to watch on his smartphone. And then he's got an asterisk, and the asterisk says, even though this is an 80s game, it foresaw the arrival of smartphones. Oh, very good, very good. Uh, it continues, uh, of an ice ball rolling up the ocean floor. Crazy stuff. He's desperate to watch it, but unfortunately everyone in his immediate vicinity hates him. <laughs> A M W A F A F W H W A I C B R U T O C is a platform in which you must try and keep moving for as long as possible to avoid getting punched. Because a punch means Thomas has to start the video at the beginning again. I think that description saves it, to be honest. Because uh, yeah, uh, I would say that that's attempting to be a AAA title uh, that then goes into the budget bin. This is a good one. Uh, this one is by Mr. Bill Harbison of Ocean Software. Fame. Oh! Uh, he's still working in the industry now, so he's got, uh, we'll say, some experience under his belt. He does uh, indeed. 
<laughs> I will just show you the artwork on this one first. Oh, very nice. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what do you reckon that's called? Oh, I like that the pills look like actual little tablets. <laughs> Viagra. <laughs> Viagra, yeah. <laughs> so if you were going to name the main character, what would you call him? Gordon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've got Gordon, <laughs> according to you. So that's Gordon's something something. Okay. What would it be? Gordon's... 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 Ecstasy adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon's Gordon's castle. Why why did I bother with AI generation when we've got Stu? <laughs> Cause that title is better than the actual one. <laughs> oh man, that is good. That is good, isn't it? It Spooky, is Spooky's Chase Fight, I do like that. Oh yeah, that would have been better. It is because Amazing. he's literally being chased while fighting. Mm -hmm. I think I'm trying to go more abstract when I'm guessing the titles for these games rather than... Yeah, to be fair, chase fight doesn't make a lot of sense. Chase fight. <laughs> uh, he didn't stop with that, though, because uh, Bill Harbison is a cheeky scamp. He ended up putting together a 3D render of the cassette. <gasps> oh, that's cool. And then he went on Twitter and he posted that image with the question, does anyone recognise this game? Like an innocent an innocent man said, oh, look what I've got. There. <laughs> and uh, bo both of us, because he sent me a message, like, oh, look what I've just put up. Both of us were expecting people to be like, oh, wow, what's this new magical hidden game no one's ever heard of? And almost immediately everyone just starts going, nah, that's bullshit, mate, that doesn't exist. Oh, so, no. Uh, people were, like, commenting on the size of the tape reel inside the deck. And, uh, yeah, that would have been I a mean, lot game, wouldn't it? That, <laughs> it would have that taken like an hour. Multi-load hell. <laughs> I must have just, I must have been thick as shit because when he sent me that, I was like, oh, that looks like an actual. How, how does he do this? Uh, but yeah, people were just like, nope. I, I refuse to believe it, oh. uh, and where I was like, yeah, that's real, I immediately want it. But anyway, one of the things I said to him is that this looks like a perfect example of one of those games you'd pick up with amazing box art, and the game would just end up being basic shite. Just a, so, a maze with it. Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. They would just get hire somebody to do a superb box art, and it would just end up being an absolute turd. So with that in mind, I made a TV advert for it, and I used the voice of my friend's American girlfriend, Elena. Uh, thanks, Elena. Here's Spooky's Chase Fight, the advert. Hey, kids, are you bored? Then you need Spooky's Chase Fight. It's the most exciting, the most outrageous, the most challenging game ever made for the Commodore 64. Help Spooky collect all the supreme extreme power pills, but beware, because if Spooky gets bitten by the sneaky one-eyed cobra... He'll die all over again. <laughs> Stop laughing while I'm trying to laugh. Just laugh <laughs> well, that's happening. That's amazing. That's that's Spooky's Chase Fight. And what price point would you slap on Spooky's Chase Fight? Uh, oh, well, because you've shown me the <laughs> the actual gameplay. The actual for gameplay. <laughs> I would go for straight away budget release. Hi everyone. Welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, well... Here we go! Great YouTube channel. I would tell you to go and subscribe, but as he has literally 99,000 more subscribers than I do, I'm going to hazard a guess at my recommendation. It's not going to make much of a dent. Uh, Adrian did admit that he has no artistic abilities, but I think he has actually created one of the most believable looking covers. He looks a bit like Merlin. So mm, this I, I would... Uh, this is a straight up... Say what you see. Merlin's cricket. No, you're seeing Merlin, but what is Merlin? Oh, a wizard. Mm. Wizard fights cricket. Wizard oh, cricket it's fighter. Close. I, think, I think you're close enough, but the crickets are actually on his 
his side. Oh! It's a very, to be honest, it's a very confusing plot. I think Adrian went mad for a second with the title. So it's The Wizard of Crickets. Oh, okay. There we go. Wizard of Crickets. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's quite a cool one, actually. I but like that it one. It is. I mean, he's he, he obviously raided the clip art um, toolbox. Yeah. And it, it, it's worked unbelievably well. Yeah. His description here is a plague of crickets is threatening to take over the realm use your amazing wizard powers to command the invading crickets to attack your enemies and fight evil forces they're they're really big juicy insects so you kind of have to fight the urge to now i like the way there's a plague of crickets and the wizard has just taken the opportunity to use the plague for his own evil fighting purposes. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't say that the evil forces sent the plague of crickets. He's just being opportunistic. Oh, like, what are the chances that his power to command crickets? <laughs> it was just happening at the time that he could take advantage of it to fight evil. Uh, yeah. Well, right place, right time, I suppose. <laughs> it's exactly that. <laughs> What, what price would you put on? Uh, well, he's put one ninety nine, but that it, oh, I don't know. That could that could possibly be a triple A title that's gone in the budget bin. Have a guess at the title on that one. Uh, right, like a rave. It, it just look like a rave. So <laughs> he's also a wizardy of some store, sort, some sort. I'll, I'll pretend that I can't see that it says constable there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, sh but, uh, I've shown a bit of the constable. Okay, you can have the constable. Well, I, the hat would have given away as a policeman anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you want the description as well? Might help guide you. In Go on, then. PC Peter works for the police force as a patrol officer by day, but by night he is a witch doctor. Protecting the people of Blunderton from malevolent spirits, guide PC Peter through a hundred screens of 100% machine code action and collect all the pieces of the magical totem before the town is taken over by a mystical evil force. I mean, is it just like witch doctor constable? Oh, see, he's gone. Oh, it's Shaman Patrol Constable. Oh. He was leading you astray with the description. He there. was, yeah. I, I would say AAA that went into the bargain bin. Uh, we've got another knockoff. I'm just going to show you the artwork on this one. Again, try and give me a title. Imagine you were going to take Jet Set Willy or Manic Miner and make a legally distinct version. So he's a miner. Yes. With a gun. Yes. Where is he? He's he's in the desert. Oh, uh, who is, is would he... be using a gun in the desert? Who would be using a gun in the... A cowboy. <gasps> is, is it cowboy <laughs> miner? Is it minor cowboy oh, desert man? Oh, say that first one again. Cowboy miner? And how much hair does he have under that helmet? Is it... Is that... Is it your Brenner? Is it bald cowboy miner? <gasps> oh, well done. It's good. I like that. It's good, isn't it? It is. And if you want, do you want an alternative cover for it? Oh. Um, he the, he did me a cover of um, a cover that of a game he'd lent to his friend for a week. Right. And that is this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I quite like that. I am going to go for yeah. uh, AAA. I am just a cowboy. 